Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my April wrap up. All in all, the April reading month was pretty good for me. I managed to complete a total of 25 books, so I'm really, really happy with that. So as always, let's jump in with a few of my statistics for the reading month. So of those 25 books, I read 15 novels, 2 graphic novels, 2 children's books, 1 short story collection, four novellas and one manga. So I read quite a like wide variety of things, which was good. Um, again, of the 25 things that I read, I read 16 physical books, four audio books and five eBooks. And then of those 25 things, eight were items that I owned and 17 were from the library. So that is a pretty shitty statistic, um, but that was always kind of going to happen this month just with the amount of library due dates that I had. I managed to read a total of 6,304 pages in the month of April, which averaged out to about 203 pages like per day, which I'm really happy with. I love keeping that um, like average kind of over 200 pages. The longest book I read was 455 pages, and the shortest thing that I read was 105 pages. That was one of the novellas that I read. The highest star rating that I gave in the month of April was a five star. However, that was for a reread. Um, the only highest star rating I gave apart from that, I gave two 4.25 star ratings. Um, so I still haven't given a five star rating to like a new to me read yet in 2017, which is a little bit sad. And the lowest star rating I gave was I did give two different books 2.5 stars in the month of April. So my average star rating for the month was 3.48 stars, which is up from last month. So I'm pretty pleased with that. As always, I did film a mid-month wrap-up where I talked about the first 12 books that I read in the month from the 1st through the 15th. So I will just be talking about the 13 books that I read from the 16th through the 31st of April in this video. So let's jump straight in. I'm going to try to get through these as quickly as possible because I do have 13 books to talk about. So let's jump right into it. The first book that I want to talk about is Famous Last Words by Katie Allender. This is a like YA, like contemporary mystery type story um, that follows a girl who's just moved into a um, kind of a new home and then some like uh, weird things start happening. And at the same time as all that's going on, um, there is a serial killer in um, like the area that she lives in in Los Angeles who is committing murders and setting up the crime scenes to look like famous like death scenes in movies so you kind of got that going on at the same time I this was really enjoyable like a really like enjoyable easy read I really liked that it wasn't like too romance heavy and I did like a couple of the themes that they kind of had going on in there in terms of commentary on um, like the guilt you feel after like maybe someone in your family passes away and just like issues like that. However, it was definitely like surface level like themes. I definitely thought that it could have gone deeper. And also the story was really, really, really predictable. Um, in the end, I did really enjoy it. I gave it three stars. The next book I completed was A Disobedient Girl by Rue Freeman. So this is a book set in Sri Lanka. This is actually an own voices story as well. Um, the author is Sri Lankan and this book is set in Sri Lanka. Um, and it follows um, like two different perspectives of like two women. Well, one is a girl who is kind of a servant girl um, in a Sri Lankan household. And then there is a woman who has three young children and she is trying to basically escape a um, bad marriage. And she is taking her three children like on a journey to like some of her relatives to escape this bad marriage. And you're following, um, they're differing like in alternate chapters, you're following both of their storylines. Um, this was very slow to get going for me, like very slow to get going. I wasn't invested in the story until like at least halfway through. And in one of the character Lather's perspective, I didn't like a single character. And then um, with the other character's perspective, um, Biso, I think it is, with her perspective, like kind of what happened like at the end with her kind of portion, I just really didn't believe like, obviously I believe it because I was told that it, like, happened, but I didn't believe that that character, like, that it, that that would happen. Like, I didn't see the character motivations. Like, it just didn't make sense to me as part of that character. Um, 
So um, in the end, like it was like a well-written story um, that was like, and I haven't read, I don't think I've ever read anything set in Sri Lanka before, so that was really interesting. Um, in the end, I gave this one three stars. Next, I completed a book on audio, which was Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. This is a non-fiction book that is about like introversion and things like that. And I have to say, I was very disappointed in this. I thought that this was going to be much more engaging and kind of interesting than what I found it. I think it would have been better if I'd read this in physical format as opposed to listening to it on audio because listening to it on audio, my mind wandered a lot. This audio book took me a long time to get through because I had to continuously go back and re-listen to portions because I realized that I hadn't actually taken anything in. I found it quite dry. The only parts that I really, really enjoyed, which I did really enjoy, were the kind of more anecdotal parts of the story about kind of people in history and their introversion like I found the parts but where she was speaking about Rosa Parks and how um you may think because of who Rosa Parks is in history that she was a very like extroverted person and she wasn't she was definitely an introverted per introverted person so I found that stuff really interesting but apart from that quite frankly I found this a bit boring um in the end I gave it 2.5 stars next I read a manga collection and that was Orange Volume 1 by Ishigo Takano the only manga I've ever read so far is the complete um, Death Note um, manga um, series. So this is the first thing, like manga that I'm kind of dipping my toe in with. And this is a more contemporary kind of um, manga story. It follows a girl who receives a letter from herself in the future, basically telling her that there's this new student who is going to be starting that day. Um, I don't really want to say anything more than that because I feel like you kind of need to read it and just like immerse yourself in the story. I will say this took me a while um, to get fully invested in. I struggled with, I struggled with the formatting of this manga a little bit, but as it went on, I kind I became used to it and I did like start to be more immersed in it. I also struggled with the names, and that is just a cultural thing because I am not Japanese. I'm not familiar with like all the different Japanese names, and so sometimes to me they're very similar. And so, like. It takes me a while to really grasp like who's who and like what their um, names are. But once I kind of get that down, I really, really enjoyed this. I actually really enjoyed like the whole cast of characters. I found this really enjoyable. There's one part of the story that like gave me goosebumps and I really, really can't wait to read the second volume and kind of like find out how this all ends. So I'm really, really am, um, I'm loving it basically. I really, really did end up enjoying it. So I gave this four stars. Next, I finally started my reread of the Harry Potter um, series. I read the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, this beautiful, beautiful illustrated edition. I don't really know what to say about this, to be honest. This, for me, as with most people, is very, very nostalgic. Um, I can see that this book maybe does have like a bit of filler in it, like now as an adult kind of reading it, um, and but... I just love it. Like, I love this so, so much. It brought me such joy, like literal joy. It brought me to be like back in this world. And I really loved this illustrated um, edition. I just did want to share with you my two most favorite illustrations from the book. They're probably common ones that everyone loves, but um, this is probably like, this is one of my two favorites is this one here of the Quidditch um, rings with the birds and the castle in the background. I just love this like orange um, like palette, which is interesting because orange is one of my least favorite colors. Um, but I love that one. And then I also love this full double page spread of the Forbidden Forest and the um, unicorn in it. And it's just absolutely stunning. So I enjoyed this. 100%. This is my five star read. It is a reread, obviously, um, but I enjoyed this as much as I ever have, basically. So 100% five stars. Next, I read Bridget Jones' Diary by Helen Fielding. This is a book that I've never read, but I have seen the movie. And I've always wanted to read like the book. Um, and so I finally did that. Um, it was really enjoyable and I find the character of Bridget Jones to be like 
really relatable and like all the like, you know, her inner thoughts and the struggles that she has with herself and her career and how her life's going and stuff like that. I find super, super relatable, especially now that I'm in my late twenties. Like I'm not that much younger than what um, Bridget is in the story. And I really, really enjoyed like all of that kind of stuff. I have to say I did struggle with the portrayal of weight in the story. I have heard someone else who's read this talk about this and I can't for the life of me think who it was, but um, in the diary entries, because this is like an epistolary novel, it's told in diary format. She, at the start, normally of each like diary entry list, like her weight and how much calorie she's eaten and how many cigarettes she's smoked and how many alcohol units that she's drunk and things like that. And um, this is, is set in the UK and they generally um, list their weight in stone and pounds, which is not how we generally list weight in Australia. We generally say things in kilos. Um, so I wasn't familiar with like what these like weight was. And when I did the conversion um, to like what to find out, like for me, like what Bridget weighs, because she's widely accepted in the novel and in the movie to be overweight. And she's not overweight at all when you do the conversion. So for your information, I believe for them, like just generalizing, because her weight does fluctuate a bit in the story, which again is natural. Um, her weight is about nine stone two, I think, which I, if I recall correctly, is approximately 57 kilos for those people who like deal in kilos. Oh boy, like that is not even close to being overweight. And like, I weigh a lot more than that. Like, like it was just very hard to grasp and I could have understood it if it was that she weighed that and she felt uncomfortable and like felt overweight because the way women view their bodies is widely known to be not always accurate. I would have got that, but it's like a widely accepted thing by like everyone like in the stories that like Bridget's chubby, ha ha ha. Like, and I just didn't get it. And I also thought that like she herself, and again, this is probably a, like, it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's very true of women, but her relationship with food and her weight was like very bad, which is accurate. But like she weighed herself like every day, like her weight was in there every day. And she would like say, oh, like it's good that I've like lost. And I was like, <laughs> it's ridiculous to weigh yourself every single day. Like it's actually very, very, very unhealthy. Like to do that, like, like for your mental health, I feel so. Um, and I just wish that like maybe if that was going to be in there that like maybe there could have been like a side character or something who was saying to her like this isn't healthy like you shouldn't be weighing yourself every day like just try to be like eat healthy you know and be healthy and be happy. Um, and I know that's not always easy to do but there was just no character in there ever saying that like maybe there was no commentary in there that maybe this wasn't the most healthy outlook or the most healthy things that she was doing. So that did bother me a little bit, but for the most part, it was really, really enjoyable. I gave this 3.5 stars. The next book I completed was Day of Judgment by Felicity Pullman. This is the final book, the sixth and final book in the Yana Chronicles, which is a series that I've been reading for a long time now. So I'm really glad to finally be done with it. Um, I don't have too many thoughts really about this conclusion. Like it was a pretty satisfying conclusion. I obviously can't say too much about like what this is about because it is the sixth book in a series, but I was pretty happy like overall with the conclusion. Um, I gave this 3.25 stars. Next, I read Telltale by Sam Hayes. This is one of the books that I was reading from my like physical written out to read list. So it's a book that I'd written on that list like flip it ages ago and I have no idea now like why I put it on that list or what like intrigued me about it. This is a mystery thriller type of novel that follows three different characters. We're following a young girl who is recently been left by her father at kind of a like home for children. Um, her mother died when she was young and her father's like kind of dropped her off at this home for children and she's kind of constantly waiting for her dad to come back for her. We then follow a um, woman who is at a school for girls and she has just taken a job um, kind of helping out at the school. Um, but you kind of know like kind of upfront that there's like more to this character and that she's kind of like maybe hiding out, things like that. We then follow a um, woman who is married and has a um, teenage daughter and just kind of living the general suburban life. So you're following these three different characters um, that's all I really want to say because I really would struggle to tell you anything more about what the general plot is without really giving things away. This was really hit on hit and miss for me. I found that 
it felt like the author was really trying to create suspense like really quickly but because of that it just didn't work because I didn't get like why the character was so stressed out about these things like the um suburban character like the um, woman who has the husband and the teenage daughter she's leaving a friend's house one night and she sees a car like parked on the street with someone sitting in it as she's like going to her car and then as she's reversing out this car like hits her with their car and then like drives off and she's very she, well, she, she doesn't say that she's that concerned about it like in her like inner thoughts that you're kind of reading but then she gets home and like she lies about what happened like to her husband like she won't tell like she pretends like she reversed into a pole and I just it just didn't make sense you were just like why why are you doing this like it just and it was kind of like trying to make it like she was getting really stressed out because she couldn't tell her husband these things but you didn't know why like why can't you tell your husband these things like it just I just didn't really work for me I also thought that there was like no character development in this I really didn't like the romance that was in it um, so I don't know, I've given it three stars, which like looking back, like it was like enjoyable. Um, three stars might be like maybe generous because I did have a lot of problems with it, but my overall like feeling coming out of it was that it was a three star read, so that's what I'm going with. Next, I completed Deep Freeze by Emily Rodder. This is the 28th book in the Teen Power Inc. slash Raven Hills Mystery series. Don't really have too much to say about this one. It was very enjoyable as always. Um, as far as the series goes, it's probably like middle of the road, like overall for the series. I did really enjoy it. I gave it 3.5 stars. The next book I completed is another book that I listened to on audio, and that is The Most Dangerous Place on Earth by Lindsay Lee Johnson. Now, I found this quite interesting. This is like a contemporary story, um, and The Most Dangerous Place on Earth is high school. Um, this book is set in high school, so I just kind of find that title in and of itself, like I really love that. Um, and it's set in a um, high school, so basically we have this whole part at the beginning where the characters are in middle school, and there is this boy at the school who is very different from them, you know, yada yada, and he's picked on quite a bit and bullied, and he writes a love letter to this like more popular girl at his school, and she gives the letter to her friend, and her friend gives it to and they like both end, kind of end up giving it to this boy, like this popular boy who the girl has a crush on, like wants to be her boyfriend. And he posts the letter on Facebook and then him and some of his friends and like just kids from the school generally all start to really, really severely bully this kid. And he basically ends up committing suicide by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and so you have that happening in middle school and we kind of then jump forward to high school. And we're then following these characters in high school. There's this new teacher who's come to the school who, like, doesn't know all the background and things like that. And so, and we follow, we get lots, like, different perspectives. We constantly change. Like, we get a chunk of the book in one perspective, then the next. And we follow several of the different students um, at the school. Um, I really liked the commentary, basically, on high school and how important and all-consuming everything can feel to you when you're in high school um, and how everyone's high school experience is different. Um, I really enjoyed like all of that kind of thing. I will say that I did struggle with it being like we're only seeing like a really small glimpse basically of these kids lives and at a really small kind of like time portion so you don't get like a resolution really like for their stories it's not like oh and then this character went on and lived happily ever after with this guy and this character went to jail or this character you just you don't get any of that kind of stuff and I do struggle with those kind of stories but like I get it um at the same time like I do but and the book does touch on some like really important issues like it deals with um you know, sexual relationships and bullying, obviously, and, like, lots of things like that. I would say a massive trigger warning for bullying, obviously. It deals with underage drinking and drug use and internet safety and, like, lots of things like that. Um, at one point, it did feel very sex positive. There is a character who is widely known, like, within the school for being a girl who has had casual sex with many guys from the school and when you have a perspective from her at one point she talks about like she, there's literally a, a like quote in the book that says something along the lines of and I am paraphrasing but that she has always had sex just as much for her pleasure as she has for anyone else's and I really love that they put that in there that sure a lot of people maybe think that she's a slut but she enjoys sex and she wants to have sex because she's enjoys sex and it's really none of anybody else's business who or how many people she chooses to sleep with. And I thought that was really great. That is kind of like in other perspectives, like 
there are people who like you know slut shame and all of those kind of things and some kids maybe making really poor decisions like there is um but i did appreciate that they kind of put that in there that just because a girl maybe has slept with a lot of guys in high school like is like why does that have to be a bad thing so I did really appreciate all those kind of things. Overall, I don't know, it was just kind of like up or down. There were some things that I really liked about it, some things that I like really struggled with. But overall, like it was a really interesting kind of commentary on high school. In the end, I gave this one 3.5 stars. Next, I read the first book from this bind up, which is Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout. There are Obsidian and Onyx both in this, but I just read Obsidian. Um, it is the first book in the Lux series, which is a five book series. Um, it follows a character who moves to a new town, like a small town kind of, and she discovers that her next door neighbors are aliens and that one of these teenage boy aliens is perhaps a rather attractive male specimen. And, you know, the story goes from there. I will say this does have one of my massive pet peeves, which is that you know from the synopsis that the next door neighbors are aliens, but the main character doesn't find that out until like quite a ways into the story. And that really annoys me because there's supposed to be all this build up of like, ooh, what are they? And I'm like, well, they're aliens. You told me that they were aliens. Like everybody knows that they're aliens. Like I knew going in before I read the synopsis because you hear people talk about it, people say aliens. Like I'm saying aliens. Everybody knows it's aliens. Main character doesn't, so that's a bit annoying. Anyway. Um, so this is very, very Twilight to me. Better probably like than Twilight, I would say. I haven't read Twilight in a really long time. Loved Twilight back in the day, let's be honest. Um, Katie is a much better character to me than Bella. Um, like a much more nuanced, like deeper character than Bella, who's just kind of like all surface level, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, I had a bit of a problem with Damon in this, who is the main kind of male, like love interest type character who is a massive dick let's be honest he's a real dick and my mate i don't have a problem with like him being a dick like he's a main um love interest who's supposed to be you know this love hate relationship and you know he's really arrogant and cocky and you know they have banter and all that stuff i get all that that's fine i really hated though that he seemed to think that he could kind of everything that he did that was like real some of like he pulled some real dick moves and that all of that was okay like it could just all be forgiven because he knew that katie found him attractive and i was just like oh like that's not that's not cool so that just really really annoyed me i haven't read too many alien books i will say and i did find like all the alien stuff like really interesting like i really liked kind of like learning about all the like alien species and things like that i did find all that very interesting it's a very like readable like addictive kind of reading and the plot was fun i enjoyed it i gave it 3.5 stars next i read all the little liars by charlene harris this is the ninth book in the aurora tea garden series i've spoken about this series before so if you recall basically the author published the first eight books like a really really long time ago and then the series just stalled for some reason it, like it wasn't complete as far as i could tell from when i read the eighth book but no books were published for like 13 years and then now this like um ninth book has been published um and i wasn't sure how i felt about that and whether i would like continue so i wanted to read this book and kind of like see how i felt about it and I wasn't sure also if this ninth book was a final book or if it was going to keep going. It is keeping on going. There is a tenth book listed like on Goodreads, which I believe is being published next year um, or maybe late this year. I can't recall. Anyway, um, so it is ongoing. I will say I'd been kind of gotten a bit over this series like in the previous eight books. This book did kind of redeem it for me. I thought that Charlene Harris wrote like a really interesting, engaging mystery in this one because this is... Um, for those of you who don't know, it's a, like a cozy mystery kind of like series. And I thought the mystery in this was really, really well done. Although, like, suspension of your beliefs, like, uh, is required. Because there's some stuff that happens that you just go, like, that wouldn't happen. But the mystery was really, really enjoyable. Um, there were, I will say, some editing errors in this book, which like oh, that annoys me um and like not just like one like i found like five or six errors like throughout um that really just like pulls me out of the story when i spot it and go oh why is that anyway um so that annoyed me but it was enjoyable and i really did enjoy kind of um getting to see kind of where the main character was like in her life like that has been the draw card for me the whole way through that the mysteries i haven't always been the greatest although this one was but i like following this main character and seeing like how her life progresses and things like that um, so I definitely will continue with the 10th book when that eventually gets published. Um, I gave this one 3.75 stars. I actually really enjoyed it. 
And now the final book that I completed in the month of April, which was actually a graphic novel, and that was Giant Days Volume 1, which is written by John Allison, illustrated by Lisa Tremaine, and with colours by Whitney Kogar. Um, so this was kind of the next graphic novel series that I'm kind of trying out, seeing whether I would like enjoy. I really, really loved this. This is like kind of just a contemporary graphic novel that follows three girls as they kind of are in their first year of university in the UK, I believe. I really, really, really enjoyed this. I think it's that kind of really great series in that there's kind of something for everyone in there. Like, I think most people are going to find something to relate to in at least one of the main characters, if not all of the main characters. It was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the characters. I found it really relatable. And um, I loved, like, the lady friendships. Like, I just really, really adored it. Um, I gave this 4.25 stars. It was really, really good. And I really look forward to eventually getting on to read Volume 2. So I am really excited about that. So those were all of the books that I managed to read in the month of April. I apologize if this video was longer. Hopefully it wasn't, but it probably was. Um, I would love to chat in the comments down below with you guys if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts or any amazing books that you guys read in the month of April. I would love to chat down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe to my channel if you're new here and you like my content maybe. And um, that's all I've got for this video today. Bye guys!